CEO here. Ooh, I hope y'all <laughs> doing well. My bad. It was a rough night. My my daughter wasn't feeling too hot and she couldn't get to sleep. So <sighs> I was sitting by her bedside the whole night. So I got about like two hours of sleep on me and I'm laying back right now because I need to change my stuff. I hope y'all are all... Ooh, I hope y'all are all doing well. I am constantly need to look over here and make sure that um, my audio doesn't go out like it does before, like it did in the past. But again, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I'm sorry, I'm just getting all my stuff straight. Um, every Friday, we try and come here and try and answer your questions to make 
media ministry a little bit easier for y'all. I don't know everything, but I try to um, answer stuff as best as I possibly can to make your journey a little bit easier. And I might need to sit up a little bit. I did move my mic a little bit closer. Um, I hope y'all are all doing well. Um, just to let y'all know, you didn't see it wrong. A lot of y'all said, <coughs> excuse me, that y'all liked the Saturday live stream. So again, tomorrow, we're going to be doing this again. Same bat time, same bat channel, I believe. Or it might be off by 15 minutes or something. But anyway, we're going to be doing this as well um, tomorrow. So if you're able to stop by, I will greatly appreciate it. I hope y'all can hear me well. And I got to keep, I need to move this screen closer so I can see it here. Um, got a lot of stuff going on. Um, NAB is going on right now. And if I can, hold on. If I can get over here, I can show you that I am with high anticipation. I'm waiting to see what Black Magic is going to drop. We got about two hours. So by the time I'm done, they should be going live at NAB. Um, we got a bunch of other cool stuff that I am adding to the arsenal, folks. Um, I'm going to take you through the process. They dropped the Avada 2 yesterday, and we went ahead and um, put an order in for this. This is a, um, my first FPV drone. There is no sensors to stop it from hitting walls and stuff like that. So this one is going to be interesting. It should be here. Um, next week, want to get some footage and stuff like that. I am going to go through the process because um, I need to renew my stuff. I think I might try and go through the um, part 107. If you don't know about that, if you have a drone and it's a certain weight, you need to go through a class so that you can do it for commercial stuff. Um, if it's for recreation, you don't need to go through that class but there is a free class that you do need to go through i think it takes like um, it's like 60 questions or something like that um so be mindful of that so if you get a drone and you try and use any of the footage in any way shape or form to the stuff that you use for your church or stuff like that you need to do one of those commercial well mainly commercial you can't sell the stuff um as well so be mindful of that we got that going on. Um, trying to think of some other stuff as a heads up. But if you're not a part of the Facebook group, folks, you can go to Facebook.com, look up Modern Media Ministry Made Easy, um, and then go ahead. I, you know what? I need to put a volume on this screen that I can see. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, go to Facebook, look up Modern Media Ministry Made Easy, answer the three questions, and then that's it. If you have any other questions and I don't get to it, email me at questions at agentholmes.com. Give me 48 to 72 hours to respond. Um, if the emails go back and forth and it's more than four emails, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and just go to agentholmes.com slash consultations and book a consultation, please. Um, what else do we got? Um, we are, did we hit it? Hold on. I think we hit. Yes, we did. We hit our goal of 62,000 subscribers. So thank y'all very much for us doing that. Let me, where's the live counter? Did they get rid of that? Uh, yeah, they got rid of it. But um, thank y'all so much. If it will come up, there we go. So we hit 62,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I need to go ahead and download that. And I don't know if, um, if Francisco was on. I need to go back and play with my database stuff. Um, I always try and keep a track of everything that I'm doing. And, of course, right when I try and open it, it would go slow. Um, but we got that going on. And but while I'm doing that, um, know that 
you've promised all the way up to quarter of a million subscribers. We're going to be doing a giveaway. So we are 8,000 away from our next giveaway, which is going to be at 70,000 subscribers. This is where we're going to be giving away a live streaming bundle. Um, ATEM, Mini Extreme, POE Switch, PTZ, Camera and Joystick. And to enter that, it's a link down below, or you can go to this, and that is it. Um, I think I've done enough blabbing. Let me go ahead and holler at some folks. Hello, Mike. Good morning. Reverend Leroy. Hello. Bernard H. Hello. Uh, Mr. Clarence. Hello. Um, Lanny. Hello, Mike from Canada. Hello, event stream team. Hello, Aiken. Hello, hello, Keith. Hello, Dr. JMM Trademark. Hello, hello, Brian Jones. Hello, Michael Baldwin. Hello, hello, um, Anthony. What's going on? And Willie. How you doing, Parker? Hello, hello. Roy from the UK. Hello, Scott. Hello, sir. Um, Darius. Hello, Chad. Hello. Another Roy. Thank you. As well, Rhonda. Hello, hello. And Kenneth Taylor. Hello. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention is this. We're making a change, and we're going to do some – got to move quick on this. So um, it's not going to be next Sunday because I'm going to be flying back from Florida. Hold on one second. Patrick Weaver from Sweet Water. All right, so that was Sweet Water. I get it. <laughs> I'm expecting a package from them, so we got to hit back with that. But um, what I want to do, we're going to move quick on this. So look out for this. It's not going to be next Sunday because, like I said, I'm going to be f flying back from Tallahassee, Florida. But we're moving forward with the For Me 2024 e-missionary conference. Just based on the resounding response back, this is going to be online only. So um, we're going to have everything on the website. We're going to change that up. But what I need... I need y'all. This this conference has always been where the community, not just me, but the community, y'all all have great gifts and talents, and we're going to put together a list of the classes, and I, we need teachers. Um, we're going to have um, people remotely connecting. If you were part of it when we first did it, everything is going to be connected to a central hub. Then we'll live stream to the website and all this other good stuff. So be on the lookout. We are going to have an interest meeting. Excuse me. We're going to talk through the classes, what you're going to teach. Each class is going to be around like 45 minutes, um, 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll have some keynotes and all this other stuff. We want to make this bigger and better than we did um, the other time, but be on the lookout for all that information. All right, so I think enough of that is done. Um... And y'all know I'm asking for y'all to send me y'all's team pictures. Um, send me an email at questions at AJ Holmes. Do my media team send a picture so you can shout out your media ministry team. And then also, if y'all got some great stuff going on, email me at info at ajhomes.com, viewer stories. And let me know if you guys got something interesting that y'all did for Easter, you got something coming up for the summer, any exciting stuff, let us all know. All right. I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and fire away some questions. Mike, I got issues with overhead projectors and stuff. Do you have any videos you've worked with so some of these if you know projectors? I've done a couple. Um, actually, I'm waiting for two projectors for TCF to be delivered today. So I will be doing that next week. So be on the lookout for that. Those two projectors are also going to do image blending. So both of them are going to be meld it together to make one humongous screen. That's the first that I've done that. I've done it in, well, no. I, yeah, this is the first time I've ever done it because the projectors could do it. You could also do it in ProPresenter, so we're going to go through that. Um, we already, we got the mounts. 
just waiting for the projectors to come today. All the cables have been ran in the ceiling. We're going to do all of that. They're not doing a the screen. They're doing HD paint on the wall, all that other fun stuff. So once I get the projectors up next week, then they're going to mask off everything, get it all lined up, get it connected, and we'll go from there. So outside of that, I have done a couple of videos where – St. Timothy, we just re recently did a projector. Back in the day when I changed the projectors at Antioch to lasers, I did that. I didn't shoot a video when I did the one at Spring Creek. Um, did one at Gates of Faith maybe five years ago, four years ago. Um, but be on the lookout for the newest one, and I'll call that out. Reverend Leroy, and I got to keep looking over here to make, <coughs> to make sure everything is in place. Um, good morning, AJ family. Have you used the Elgato Mobile Stream Deck app on the Apple tablet? Yes, actually, I have. Originally, when I was in Antioch, when COVID started, where I was running everything and it was just me and Pastor Sales there, I would be up there, but then he wanted music. I had the Stream Deck on my iPad on top of the music stand in front of the piano, and that's how I changed the cameras. Um, to different scenes, and then I changed the scenes and ran the live stream from down there. So I would start everything up, have everything on the main camera, have the I actually I had to have my iPad and my phone. The phone was um, running the app for Pro Presenter, and then the camera controls, the PTZs, and then I had the other one that was for OBS. No, I had it in reverse. I had my iPad going to the ATEM and the joystick, and then my phone was using the mobile app for the um, stream deck so I was able to go from pre-service to live to be right back to offering all that stuff while I was on the piano so yes and actually I still have it I don't know if I uninstalled it uh, let me see let me see let me see yeah actually I still do so oh yeah mine mine has expired because I didn't renew it so yes I have used it um I thought I bought it where it was outright, but yeah, it works great once you link it up. Um, I answered this one in the comments before we started, but call it out. Um, Bernard H. wants to know, um, he has the Blackmagic Rackmount ATEM 1ME, one of the first ones, the early ones, and he's trying to connect the SMT AV PTZ 30X to it via SDI. Um, and for some reason, the camera is not showing. The reason is on the older ones, um, like the ATEM Television Studio, the original ones, those ATEMs did not have scalers. So when you ran it, um, like Antioch is still the same way. Um, Abundant Life is the same way. Um, Greater Faith AME is the same way. They have the ATEM Television Studio. Those require the cameras to be set to the exact same um, resolution and frame rate. If you don't have that, it will not work. Um, that's why I like the ATEM so much now because it doesn't matter. You can mix and match. So the best thing is to log into the camera. The camera probably has more flexibility than the older ATEMs, but then you set it to that, and then that is it. Um, and then I, while y'all were seeing it, I got my database. Oops. Not that, wrong one. I have my database running. So I normally do a track <laughs> of every time we've grown in between times. So here it took, wow, it took exactly two months to grab a 1,000 subscribers. So I need, I need to put in some more work. Um, last time we went in less than a month, we grew by a 1,000. So we got to put in some more work, like looking at data to see how the stuff is going. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, that's why I answered that. I answered that. Um, if y'all don't mind, folks, the little thing I ask, if y'all can go ahead and hit that like button, it helps the YouTube algorithms and all that other good stuff um, to put the stuff out there to everyone. Michael Baldwin, um, hey, Agent, my niece is going to build me an editing computer. Do you have any recommendations? All right. I've been wanting to do this, but um, that drone came out, <laughs> and hopefully Black Magic doesn't drop anything um, new. Um, I know that they are, but hopefully it's something I can restrain myself on. I wanted to build a new system um, 
for a video editing system. So if you want me to go, um, <laughs> excuse the, the pun, balls to the wall of a system, I'm going to show you what I would build. All right. Um, I am going to stick with AMD. What I would do is go to the highest Ryzen 9 that's available. And that is the 7950. I'm not going to go into the Threadripper or nothing like that. But I would go with... And that's coming with a... If that's coming with the motherboard and that, that's a deal. All right, so I would go with the higher version of um, the Ryzen 9 because that's kind of what I'm using right now, which I'm very, very happy with. And we need to go with some DDR5. How many sticks in this board? That's four. So we're going to go with um, 256 gigabytes of DDR5. Um, so, ooh, it's kind of pricey. Let's go ahead and jump down to 128. <laughs> if I had a choice, I would go with 256. So we go from there. That is at 5,600 megahertz. Boom, I could have saved $10 if I went with that. Um, I would go with a 2 terabyte NVMe. This is just for the regular system. And I would go with a Samsung for that one. And that's a two terabyte right there. We can save a couple of pennies over this way. Um, well, actually, yeah, that's the pro. And then I would go, honestly, I would get probably <coughs> two of those. One for cash drive, one for my operating system drive. Then I would also see, can I do a four terabyte um, NVMe? Let's see how much those are going for. Well, that's not bad when it comes to price. This will probably be my, for my main storage. Actually looking at getting one for PlayStation. I don't know why. I don't really play games as much as I used to. Um, let me look at this motherboard again so you can see. And this is for editing. So this is just the base. I want to see a little bit closer on this motherboard so I can see what's there. And I hate that they won't let me zoom in on here. So that's one, two. It looks like it's only two. No, it's actually three. One, two, three. All right, three in, um, NVMe, so that four terabyte will work for another NVMe, or you can get a mechanical drive if you want to. Then we want to go with a RTX 4090. Um, so again, you asked. So if I had the option, this is what I would push for, for the ultimate type of um, system. Let's go with a 100 watt. PSU. Um, we'll go with the Be Quiet one. And then I'm liking the Be Quiet cases as well, too. That's actually what I actually migrated all of my systems over to this one. This is the case that I actually build custom PCs on as well. Really liking that. We can do a transparent here on the side. Doesn't really matter if you want it to. We got that, and I don't think I have every anything else in my, yeah, so if I was building one for my next pushing the limit of what I would edit with, that's where I would go with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but in all honesty, what I would probably go with, um, again, I'm using my Ryzen 9 right now, which is two generations old, works perfectly fine for me. You can probably get that for going around like 300. Go get yourself a um, 50, um, an X570 motherboard. You can use the old gen. 
Um, that should give you there. You could probably get that motherboard for like 200. Still go with 128 gigs of DDR4. You can probably get that for about another 200. And then um, put most into your processor and your GPU. That would be my recommendation. Hope that helps. There you can. Mike, thank you for subbing. Really appreciate it. When I connect my HDMI cable from my transmitter to my Canon camera, the screen on the camera goes black, but the output is shown on my ATEM. How can I stop the camera from turning black? You can't. It depends on your camera. Even my older cameras do the same thing, like my, um, my Sony camcorder. If I connect that in some of the cameras, when you um, connect out, it only allows you to have um, one interface. It's either going to be the viewfinder that shows you everything, or it's going to be the HDMI out. That is inherent with the monitor. I mean, and with the camera. It depends on the um, camera. Some of the older ones, um, newer ones don't have that, but most of the older ones, that is a known thing because... Again, I don't know when you got your camera or which camera one, but most of the time when people hooked it up, it wasn't meant to use both because nobody was hooking it up like that. So, yeah, that's inherently just how it, it was. And you said that is a, yeah, uh, Canon D90. Yeah, that's just, just the way it was. That won't work. Um, unless you're using the Canon um, app, I don't know if they fixed that. That was a long time ago when they first came out, when everybody was live streaming, they came out with an app to actually bypass that stuff. I think the issue was it lowered the quality. No, no, no. That was an app so that you can get USB out. Um, but if you're using HDMI to go to the ATEM, that wouldn't work either way. So, um, Lanny. How would you suggest avoiding a motion blur when changing scenes in OBS with one with only one PTZ camera, i.e. sanctuary wide shot to zoom in podium? What I would do is switch over to a different scene and then change the camera angle. That's what I would do. So like this. If I was doing this, I can't remember. Do I have all right, hold on. I still have this on. Um tracking. Let me turn this off. All right, let's turn tracking off. All right, so now I can move it. So like me, if I was going to change this, what I would do would be something like this. So if I, I would go over to a scene and say, hey, it's offering time. I'd cut over to a scene where it's offering time. And then now I've got my shot. I always hide the shot. That's what I would do. That was kind of the one of the other reasons why I like using dual cameras because you can cut one over to hide that. If you only have one camera, just use graphics or whatever to kind of conceal your motion. That's how I would do that. Hopefully that's in line with your question is. That's how I assumed how that was. Michael Aitken, what tip would you give for a church trying to build their social media platforms? Get everybody at the end of service to like, subscribe, and share after everything. Anything that's posted, do that. It's kicking off the algorithm so that you can get people to use the algorithm to the church's advantage. I'm going to do a video about that. I did it, but I'll probably make an updated one. Um, that's how you would do it. Leverage the algorithm to help you out. Um, let's see. We're on page one. Um, I'm looking over here to make sure my audio is right. What am I using for the chat overlay? I'm using vMix Social, and that is how it is doing that. Like, yeah, I actually use um, Bitly, and I used to use some other stuff, and I need to do some other stuff to add in there, but I'll, um, I'll look into that. Willie, 
what are your thoughts about HDMI over Ethernet? I used to use them, but once it comes to the converters and the Ethernet cable, it came out to the same price, if not more, of using fiber optic HDMI. That's why I don't use them anymore. I used to. I just don't do them anymore. Um, and that's actually how I got to know Aura, because those are the first ones I actually used when I did TVs at Signs and Wonders originally in their um, the building that I knew them um, when they were in Chester. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Back to Roy. Um, have you tried HMI extenders? Um, yeah, that's, I think that's the same one. The same. The furthest I've ran was 160 feet. Now, I do use HD Base T. I still use that Aura adapter. That's on a completely different protocol. It costs more, but that can go for up to 500 feet. So it all depends. And you know what I need to do? I need to bring up my security camera so that I don't miss this package. I have to sign for it. So, um, let's just bring up the point and we'll just look at that. Um, Anthony, hello, hello. Philip Paul, hello. Brother Art, hello. G. Albert, I'm not even going to comment. Now, you could make a Hackintosh with it. I've done that before. <laughs> Benny, um, hey, AJ, remote location live streaming internet solution. Thanks. Be on the lookout for that. I do have that for the graduation one. Um, I'm going to do an updated version with that. We already got the my second um, ATEM over here. That is what that's for. That is my carry around one that I'm doing. Um, I might, might look at getting the smaller roadcaster so that way, like the wireless that I'm using right now, it can connect to the road directly. So I can have that and put that on the podium, have it connected here, have all my other mics, the shotgun mic that does the crowd and everything. I might look at something like that. So like, for example, you get a picture of my outside. I'm looking at the front door. But... The idea, and again, I like the road stuff. It's just I'm, I'm trying to be mindful on my costs on the stuff. So it would probably be the smaller one here, like this duo, because for production stuff, I don't need a massive mixer. This gives me the connections that I need. So right now I would have one my shotgun mic here, and then my other one, I believe, I hope this one, just like the one I'm using right now, I can connect my Rode Wireless to this. And then I can have a memory card record this. This goes into the ATEM. There's my sound. That's what I'm thinking about. I don't want to drop 500 for that, but that's what I was thinking. So if I, this is, let me, let me show you the design of what I have for my mobile live streaming. Um, and so let's go mobile live streaming. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I thought I hit new. New design. Mobile live streaming. All right. So in this setup, we just did the review of the Nitro 17. Um, that's what I am going to you know, kind of be the one that's actually driving and controlling and for me to monitor and stuff. I have an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, so that way I don't miss anything if something was missed in here. I have two cameras. I might try and do a PTZ outside. I might. Um, but right now, this is where I use the studio camera and then... I use my Sony, so typically my brother-in-law is on the stage, and then I have this camera beside me, and for the ones that want to know, this is where I do that HD base T, so this is the HD base T extender, so that way I can just run one um, Ethernet cable to connect all of these. So this is connected, HDMI, 
and I gotta keep looking over here for my audio. Um, that connects here over HDMI. This connects here over HDMI. This connects over HDMI. Then these are connected over a single Ethernet cable. Um, what I want to do is get a viewfinder because um, I want to, and I, I, it's unfortunately, it's been a history of this. I actually, for redundancy, I have a drive hooked up to that camera. I have a drive hooked up to this camera. The last thing you want is to have an angry parent and something happened, the live stream goes down, and you want to be able to record this stuff. We got that. Then I also have another one here that is recording the ISO. So recording, recording, and I'm recording, uh, well, memory card, um, hard drive, hard drive recording everything through here. And then this is also connected back to like OBS or something like that on this system. Why did it do that? So I'll have this connected as well too over here so that OBS is recording here. So we're recording at four locations. And if I had the mixer, and I've split all of these out before. Um, I mean, I've done these as standalone videos, but like I said, I will update this. Then originally I didn't need to do this, but if I did add a mic, this is how I would do it. So I have a shotgun mic on my camera right here that gets the audience and the students and everything like that that are sitting right behind me. I have another wireless one that is on the stage mic. And in this one, this is actually wireless. So the other one is plugged into like mic number. Um, actually, I'm con I have this connected to the wrong one. I have this going to the ATM for mic number two. And then the receiver of this is connected into mic number one. So that's how both of these are connected. Originally, I would have this connected to the mixer if I didn't do this, so might as well just do that. I don't know why I messed that up. And again, sorry for dragging this out, but you asked. So this is a setup, and this is a compilation of a bunch of videos that we've done. All right, so this is how we have this. I also have a switch under the table that is providing internet to everything here. I have a, yeah, so all of that is connected. Then I have a, um, the nano stations that I've used for beaming internet. That is connected. I have an actual router in between here. So it's given an IP address to all of this stuff here. This is connected to the nano station the other nano station. So this is the um, receiver. I have another one that is the transmitter that is always connected into the field house or the football team. And so the internet is there. That is connected to the transmitter that is wirelessly beamed to the football field and that's it. And now what we're adding to all of this is the the Anchor C1000, which is now going to give me power for all of this. Um, this is what's going to provide power to the whole thing. Um, I need to figure out, I'll probably run an extension cable to that one, but that's what's going to power everything. We're going to run a main line into this, but everything is going to be plugged into the Anchor, so if we lost power, all of this is still going to be powered. That is my setup, and then I also have a um, mini monitor, like the one that I have right in front of me. That is the one that I have so that I can see the multi view. And then typically when we do this on the field, 
they have an overflow for, you know, parents and stuff that don't want to be out in the sun and stuff like this. So this is a overflow. Again, it's a simple version of the same thing we normally do at church. That's what I'm saying. The skills transfer over. This is connected over a um, another HD base T or just a, they have a long old school fiber optic HDMI cable. And that's how we connect everything. So they can see everything that I'm switching. I can see the multi-view. This is handling the live stream. Worst case scenario, the laptop running OBS can fail over and do the live stream. And we're recording everywhere um, just in case. So we have four levels of redundancy. So that is my setup for my mobile. Now, one other thing, ultimately, when I do this, we're also going to put, um, we're going to, in the future have solar panels on here. So that would be my redundancy that goes into the anchor and that's power and everything. But that is my mobile setup. And if I didn't have this, this is where I can hook my phone up. And that would be as a hotspot to give internet to everything. That's how we did it for football games. Hope that helps. Um, videos for all of that stuff that I've done. Um, before in 2021, and then we've done follow-ups on all that. Neville, hello from the Virgin Islands. Um, back to Streets of Destiny. Is AJ, um, is AJ, is YouTube guest only available on Android? Um, attempted on PC or Chromebook not available. I remember that popping up. I haven't seen it again. Uh, granted, I haven't been looking for it, but... Um, I have to see because I wanted to do something like that before. All right. Sorry about that. I keep getting random messages and stuff like that. Um, Anthony, um, is there a way to split the feed coming out of the USB-C out of the A10 mini stream? Want to send to another monitor and save on a drive at the same time. Is there a way to split the feed coming out of the USB-C? I mean, you would have to have the USB. No, you can't split a USB-C like that. It's a handshake between one to one with that. The only way if you wanted to. How I do that, I mean, this is how I actually I do mine because I do mine the same way. So right now, my ATEM has two outs. One is going to the system right here in front of me. The other one is not there. It is going to the live streaming system. That is USB out. Now, how I get around that, and that's the anchor right there, charging my drone stuff. But how I get around that, I have the HDMI out um, from the ATEM going into a HyperDeck Shuttle Mini. That is how I'm recording. Um, that way you would free up all your HD, I mean, your both Cs to go there, and then you're recording. Now, if you're doing an ISO, then I don't know. If you want to split the USB and it's for data, no, it won't work. It's one-to-one it's -one for that one. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. Um, and Lenny, thanks, AJ and Mike. That is what I was thinking until I can get a second camera. Awesome, awesome. Ernesto, hello, hello. Uh, back to Bernard H. I currently use the latest Wirecast. I'm looking to start using ProPresenter with it. What is the best way to use ProPresenter with Wirecast? Use NDI and send it into Wirecast. That is the easiest way. Or do a screen capture, but NDI is the easiest way. Michael, does anybody know how to get in touch with Facebook support? Are there any good at helping or are... You know, Mike, what's the issue that you're trying to get in, in touch with Facebook for? Um, we'll see what we can do. Bill, can the font in the First Fruits Studio plugin be changed? Um, I'm not sure. 
Let's see. I don't think the free one can. Um, actually, let me bring up the OBS. Actually, let me take that back. You can change the font. Um, and where are my plugins? Access library. The bibliotech. That's actually library there. Uh, so if we go here to settings, there's the font scale. I think the free one. That's the theme, scale, size scale, number of lines, height. I must, I mean, obviously I must be wrong in that. I thought you could change it. So I'm not, I don't know. I don't, from here, it looks like you can't. I thought you could. I don't I don't know. I don't believe you can unless I'm missing it. So I have to catch back up with you on that one and see about that. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Bruce. Back to Benny. <coughs> Let me check our, our audio circuit. In our church YouTube live stream, electric guitar sound is audible and remain and remaining voices and instruments are not much audible. Before electric guitar was there, everything's. Before electric guitar was there, everything sounded good. Electric guitar sound is audible, and remaining voices. I mean, what's your setup? How do you have everything connected? Is the electric guitar going through an amp and it's picked up ambiently, or is it going into the house? <coughs> Let me know, and we'll follow back. Hi. How long does it take you to set this up once you're on site? Uh, maybe 30 minutes, to be quite honest. Because um, the main thing, my brother-in-law is one of the football coaches. So I get there and I set up the nano station um, in the football house. And I have it looking out the window. Most of the time I go there the day before or like the graduation starts at 9. So uh, most likely I would get there at seven. Same mindset I have with church. <laughs> I'm there normally two hours before we go live. I'm there. But typically I go there um, the day before to set up and test the Internet and make sure it's um, there. I, the, the receiver I take back with me, but I set up the transmitter in the field house, have it aimed to the field, get it all synced up, make sure the IP address is test and all that stuff works. That's what I do first, and then I come out at 7, do the same thing again, verify I'm getting the IP address, verify that I can get out to Vimeo because that's where we stream to it so the parents connect to that. We don't broadcast it live because people, they're playing music and stuff that we don't own, um, and people drive by blasting music. Last thing I want is to have people go to Facebook or YouTube, and then we can't show anything. Um, so that's held on my company website um, through Vimeo. And then I set up all that other stuff. And the good thing is, it's like literally I make the Ethernet cable right there on the fly for the exact length that I need. Now that, <coughs> now that I'm using the anchor, and I got two of them, um, I might just even p just put the anchor, the C1000 that's right behind me. That's the one that I'll probably hook up to the, or the stage for the camera that my brother-in-law uses if I don't go with PTZs. If I go with PTZs, I don't need, I just need that one power supply and I'd run PoE, Ethernet and power there and just run it back. And then I would run SDI back to avoid anybody tripping on cables and stuff like that. But 
Setting up, 30 minutes. Testing and everything, probably an hour and 30 minutes. Uh, back to Roy. Thanks for providing such awesome content. I'm in the midst of a live streaming install at my church. Which is your favorite offering, NDI with AI tracking? Honestly, all of these cameras, I've never installed an AI camera that I've used in service. All the AI cameras I have are here that it's just me. Um, Cause I have not, like I've been meaning to take one of these cameras down and like put it at gates just to see how it will respond. But I think when I do that, that's when I'm gonna come out of retirement and come out of the pew and go back to working in the media. Um, I'm kind of on pause with that. So I personally have not used any of the AI tracking in a service yet. Um, do you have any videos on DaVinci Resolve? I have tons of videos on DaVinci Resolve. Because originally, before I started doing this live stream, I used to do a thing called church post-production. This is where I would go through, and I actually did a live stream, but I was editing the stuff for um, Antioch when I was doing everything for the videos and everything like that. Um, and this is back in the day. It's, it's way, way, way back there. But I do still do... Um, other videos. So it's like 44, one of these of uh, church post production where I'm going through in here. Let me see. I don't know why the video didn't update. But in here, this is where I was going through. See, that was my old st stuff where I go through here and I'm editing the video and all this other stuff. And I, that, I still got a long history of that. Now, I'm not back into editing like that because most of the time I'm trying to get more into um, back help churches get back into syndicating, editing, and doing stuff like that. I'm not in a position to do that because I was just overwhelmed by me doing everything myself. But maybe we might get back into that. What I was thinking about doing, let me take a quick break real quick. Um, this is what I want to do. I do want to do a new series. Um, so I want to put this out. I haven't had a chance to do the graphic. But I want to. I did this originally, but I want to get back into it now that a lot more people are live streaming. I want to start doing live streaming reviews or, we, you know, you submit your stuff to me, and I just walk through, like, oh, I would, you know, kind of the anatomy of a live stream. And this is the, the last chapter I'm finishing in my book as well, too, just talking about how to live stream at church service and, and just look over and analyze it. Hey, I would remove this. I would add this. I would cut this. I would do this. And just look through a whole service. Now, I have to be careful about that because some people, I understand what, like Erica Badu says, I'm sensitive about my stuff. <laughs> so some people I understand might be sensitive and some people might take it as an insult. It's not. It's just meant to grow. So that's why I'm not going to just randomly pick stuff because I don't want people to get upset. But I would like people to submit it to me and I go ahead and analyze it because I'm going to be doing this as well. Um, I was talking to um, Pastor Kyle about the same thing, about not being so emotional about what we got but realize like hey some of the stuff we might need to cut out because it's boring for anybody to watch and stuff like that so I want to work on things like that that's one thing um and what was the other thing and then I want to get back into um making videos back to what you're saying Philip I want to get back into making announcements like my brother-in-law and sister do the announcements at Gates I want to just like I did it um, Antioch, I'm going to sit down one day and just take all that stuff and because my sister does a voiceover and then my brother-in-law does um, still images to it. I want to kick it up a notch um, and just as a sample um, and then we go from there. You never know. Might get back into it, but that's kind of the stuff. I'm just kind of get back into the stuff that I do to where like I'm playing around with Friday and Saturday for doing Q&As for the people who Friday works for them, but then some days Saturday work for them. Roundtables on Sundays, sometimes it works best for them on Mondays. We rotate around. And then, because um, they used to do the church post-production on Sunday, take an hour break, and then I'd go right into the roundtable. So, I mean, it, it was draining, but, I mean, it was fun. So I'm thinking about doing that and add some more content as well. Back to Mike. My issue is that, is that for the 
past three weeks, we can't live stream to our Facebook page. It says we have to have an established presence before we go live. Hey, Mike, email me a shot of that. That sounds like some junk, um, to be quite honest. I've never seen that. You don't need to establish a presence at all. Um, there is a bunch of scams that have been going out. I've gotten a couple of them from people claiming that they are Facebook and is a lie from the depths of hell. Um, so just got to be mindful of some of that stuff. Um, I've reported a bunch of people, um, scam artists and stuff like that, but I haven't seen a response back from them. Back to Benny, um, guitar to amp to mixer and mixer to audio interface to laptop. Now, what are you using the live stream? Are you going to Zoom? Are you, what, what's, what's the final piece that sends the stream out? Philip Paul wants to know, is there a way to add a border on the camera source in OBS? Yes, put a box behind it and then shrink the camera to be inside the, the frame of it. Um, that's how normally I would do that. Uh, let's see. Do we bring up a media source? Let's do 91. Is that not working? There we go. All right, so like for something like this, if you really, 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 really want to do something, <coughs> like I said, I am a simple person. I come in here and just do a color source, put it like that, put it behind it, take my media source, I shrink it to like whatever the size is, and I go to my color source, something like that, and I just make the box a little bit bigger and then put my camera inside of it. That's pretty much it. That's how I would do that. So, I mean, you can always come in here and change that cool editor to whatever like that. There you go. That's how I would do that. Um, back to Neville. I have an analog mixer, the Allen Heave GL2400, and would like to connect to a digital stage box. Is that possible? Well, let's see. All right. Um, Allen and Heath GL2400. I've messed with this one before. And you want to connect a digital. First off, I need a better picture than that. Come on. show y'all something for us in a second I've actually been playing around with the, the 3d printer and we've been making our own stuff as well um, out of here I just want to see the back so like when you have an analog mixer you know and you want to convert this over you're gonna need to have something in between that so what first off, what type of digital stage box are you talking about? Because for this to work, you would have to probably have something in between. So it would be another box that sits here that's ooh, excuse me. That all of this would plug into that box and then it would convert it over to an Ethercon, Ethernet, whatever, and then it would be a receiver. You would need something like that. Um 
that's I, I'm not aware of anything. Like I've I've used these, but we need something to transmit and then come back. Um, let me see. And I'm 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 spitballing right now, because this part. I mean, I've worked with these. I've done a bunch of these, but you need something to go from an analog to digital. And honestly, when you start looking at the prices of this, it's almost like it would be cheaper just to go with a digital board and then do it. Now, the other thing I have used is um, and somebody recommended this to me, and I actually used this at Ashbury. Um, you would need to get a couple of these, and then you would plug all your stuff into these, and then there's an Ethicon cable that goes back. You could do something like that. I think there's an eight channel. Yeah, so, yeah, this is the one that I've looked at before. You could get two of these. So you would have your ends, four ends, no, eight ends right there, and then um, your Ethicon cable or a shielded Ethernet cable will run, and that would mimic that, but you would need to get male and female. So just like I said, you need to have one that analog would connect to. It converts it to digital, and then it goes to the other one. So you would need something like that. Um, for that to work. So I will put a link to this. I've used a smaller version of that, not the big one. Um, so I'll say stage box suggestions on there. Um, all right, so Benny, you're saying through all of that, going to the mixer, then the mixer is connected directly into OBS. That doesn't make sense. Like, it, are you doing a separate mix just for your live stream, or is it mix mimicking the house, and that's where it's going as well? No, I don't need an NDA. I just need people to realize that they ain't going to get mad when I start talking through stuff. It's just a suggestion. That's all. I don't want to just randomly grab people's stuff. I think that's rude. I'm going to ask people's permission before I use it. Because, again, it's the same way. I can't play your live stream and use your video without your consent. <laughs> so that's, that's all it really is. Marlon is asking, please recommend layover software for using with OC Go Stream Deck for church. I'm streaming from, like, what do you mean by overlay software? Like, you just talking about lyrics and scripture, lower thirds. What exactly um, overlay software are you mentioning? And let's see, while we're doing that, Let's see where we stand with the Black Magic Conference. Still got 45 minutes, so y'all got plenty of time. Um, so it's going to be right at that time. All right, back to Benny. He was saying, no separate mix, direct house mix to the audio. And you can hear everything. Well, if it's the same thing, you should be hearing the same thing inside the house of what's going to OBS. If you're not getting that, that's very strange. I don't know. Because if you're mimicking the house as what's going to OBS, it should be the exact same thing. So I'm not 100% sure what that could be. Um, Sister Destiny, at all the churches you upgrade, what lighting exists for the stage area? Nothing. <laughs> None of the ones I've done have done lighting. Um, Abundant Life, they brought in lighting. TCF is doing lighting. 
those are the only main ones. Everybody else, um, the only lighting I've actually had them do is get rid of their incandescent lights and go with LEDs. That's the most I've done. I have not. I wanted to be a part of the TCF lighting, but they brought somebody in, and I wasn't able to get around them to ask them and learn them. They were doing that in between the times there, so I didn't get a chance to do any of that stuff. Um, Marlon, what I would suggest is Worship Tools Presenter. You can do all of that through there and just have a computer connected to it, connected to one of your lines in. That's kind of like how I did the OC Go to do the exact same thing. That's what I would do, plus it's free. Um, Scott was saying I volunteer as <laughs> tribute. <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor. Um, our live stream would give a lot to talk about. All right, sure. So I would say for the people who want to do that, please send me a link um, at questions at ajhomes.com and just put um, live stream review, and I will do a video just for those. So um, I appreciate that, and we'll see how that turns out. So just email me at questions at ajhomes.com, do that review, and um, let me know. And just be on the lookout for the video, and I will do that. Reverend Leroy. What is the Bible plug-in that you said will work with OBS and Prism Live? That is the First Fruits one um, that I showed in here, First Fruit Studios. That will, will work with it. Um, Keith has an update for Facebook. Our streaming host, Subsplash, had me to reestablish my connecting permissions. Facebook changed update policies again. Pretend you were starting from scratch and set up. That makes sense. Bernard, being you mentioned about having consent to use other people's content, how do you let Facebook or YouTube know that you have consent for the content being used from another live stream or music video? Um, you need to put it in when you get a hit or a copyright claim on it. You have to submit it. So, like, for example, like, I already, I'm, I'm going to do this because I already know that they're guilty of this. So, with love they're guilty of this. So let me go to Antioch. Yep, maybe if I type the right password. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so if I go to their stuff, this is one of the original systems I built, and it's still kicking strong. All right, so if I come in here, and I know as much as I brought this, brought this to their attention, they don't do this. So right here, this video is blocked. What type of nonsense is this? So like this. They got hit something hard. The GIF. A new thing. Like this is a bunch of junk right here. Just claiming all this other stuff. Um See, some of this stuff is just over the top stupid. Um, so let me go to here. So you see, they're getting hit with stuff all the time. So mainly, like this one. They're getting hit even though this is permission. This is the intro music that I have here. So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. And as you can see, if I go back, you see they don't do it. <laughs> so if anybody from Antioch is saying... I'm like, hey, I told you. So this is what I normally would do. This is a license I have for that song, that I have permission from Envato Elements where I've purchased it. So I've even contacted them and say to whitelist me, and they don't listen. So um, I get hit with this. I come in here, actions. Um, I want to dispute it. And they've changed this, updated the form. So... I come in here, I have a license. And even when I did that I don't have rights, they've changed this again. Um, see, as you say, I own a copy, it's not a right. I'm not making many of this money, that's not right. I gave credit, that's not right. You can't say, I don't own this crap. I don't own the rights to this. That does not work. <laughs> so I don't know how many, I keep, mm, I ain't trying to get heated, but it's just one of those things that you try and tell people and I guess people just have to hit their head against a brick wall before they finally realize. And e even then, they don't. So anyway, I have a license. 
if I come in here, yes, I have permission. I paste that license in here. It did not infringe. I have the rights, all this other stuff. And then I put my name in there. And then typically within about like four hours or whatever, this stuff gets dropped um, because of this. And you can see this is repeated. It's for the exact same thing. It's the intro. So I t normally when I was running this, when I would hit this, once I got home, I would go through and put this in here. Now, I have a license. It's the exact same thing. And it's just annoying that I have to do it, but that's how you normally do it. Facebook is trash. They don't update their stuff. It's nowhere close to as user-friendly to do this. And in Facebook, just like YouTube, anybody can claim your stuff, and they don't have to prove that they own any of this stuff. Now, like I'll show you. I know that's legit because who they say this music is from, Pro Tracks. If I go in here and I expand this out, that's the author of this song. But if I go here and let me go to the license exactly, and see who is this by, see it's registered by Identify. And if identify is not that, then they're lying. So see, that's by Hawk, um, a third party. This ain't right because I actually have a license for that. So these get dropped. So that's what you have to do. The same way in Facebook, even though it's not as user friendly, if you have a license, you put it in place and then tell them to shut up. I have permission for it. And if now, especially if you're doing it right, if you have a license and they still try and claim, then, like for me, like I had somebody hit me. I use Epidemic Sound for all of my audio. Somebody claimed ownership of that. I put the license. They rejected it. I let Epidemic Sound knows it because they actually own the song, and I take my hands off of it, and now Epidemic Sound's lawyers go after them because I have a license with Epidemic Sound who actually owns the music, and these were con artists claiming that they owned it. So I didn't have to get a lawyer involved. They did. And magically, that stuff disappeared. <laughs> Fresh Start Church of Philadelphia. Um, hi, AJ. Is there a way to make the audio sync in OBS with the video? Yes, it is. There is a time delay that you need to turn that down. But if you're having a syncing issue, that is telling you that your system actually is not fast enough to do that. That is what that typically means. So inside of here, if my audio was off, we would come over here to advanced, and this is your offset. This is where you would change that number in here by milliseconds to get it in sync. That's what you would have to do. All right, I hope that helps. And I will leave OBS open instead of me closing it over and over again. Oh, actually, that was the OBS. <laughs> That's OBS on um, Antioch stuff. So start that and we'll come back out here uh philip hall we have a laptop intel i5 11th gen 12 gigabytes of ram um intel iris with video editing software with support to do shorts use um windows movie maker that's what honestly i would use in that it's already you can download it from the microsoft app store for free that's what i would use for that. Um, Steve, are you planning to take a vacation to refresh and recharge? What is this vacation thing that you keep speaking of? I, I wish. Um, I am looking at doing something with my daughter um, during spring break, trying to decide. Um, I want to take her on her first cruise. It's going to be short. Um, or I might take her to Legoland. Or we might go down to Boca Chica and see a um, Falcon 9 launch. Brittany, how far do you travel? Is that information on your website? No, you would have to contact me and how far have I traveled. We've gone all the way to Ireland, London, or California. We're getting ready to go back to California again um, sometime this year going to Florida. So, look, we have computer. We have media. We will travel. 
if it's further than four hours where we need to do like flights and stuff like that, like for Florida, we just talk, we organize it, and then we plan it that way. So I have no issue traveling wherever to try and help. Bert, moving from switching. I don't, Bert, did you send me an email? Somebody sent me an email and I hadn't get a chance to follow back up with it because I was at martial arts practice with my daughter. So if this is the same email, I'll get back to that, but I'll answer it here. Moving from Switcher Studio to Atem Products, but wondering if it's better to use the um, Atem Extreme SDI ISO or the Constellation. Well, it depends. The Constellation does not have live streaming support at all. You would need to have a web presenter like what I'm using right now or a dedicated computer to get the feed out. The ATEM SDI Extreme is what I installed at Gates of Faith or upgraded them to at Gates of Faith, and that streams itself. I think my brother-in-law, in the last two months, he completely doesn't use OBS anymore, and he streams directly from the ATEM. That's the consideration that you have to think of, whichever one you want to go with. The ATEM, you'll have it built in, and it can stream and do everything. The Constellation has more inputs and outputs, but you still need a computer or an encoder to stream because it can't stream natively. LRE TV. I am guilty of this because I have to finish the review on that. I have it right here. What are my thoughts on this? Um, I'm going to do the formal one. I actually did it, and the video was messed up, something bad, so I'm going to be doing this all over again. I got this when it was actually during the Kickstarter phase, so I have to redo this. My initial impressions, I would not use this in a church, as in like a big church, like 30, the sanctuary is deeper than 30 feet. What I am proposing using this for is like for a conference room, you want to upgrade what your pastor is using if they're doing some type of live streaming. That is the goal. Like me, when I'm done with this, I'm probably going to bless my pastor with this to up his game on his video quality so he's not just using the his laptop camera and this can live stream um that's where i would use this for like if you have a conference room or something that's maybe up to 10 feet away that's where i would use this you can also hook this up to a ptz camera maybe if you can get it far enough away to where it won't hit with water this might be a good option if you have this as in a baptismal area that's what i think about that but be on the lookout for the video of that um, Leanna Hughes. Um, our ATEM Mini Pro is not translating audio from our Behringer mixer. We have to use our J5 for audio, but wonder why everything works with the ATEM except for the audio. We use Streamlabs to live stream. What I, I, I need a kind of example of that. So you have it connected to the mic one or two, and you're saying it's not coming through at all. Is it if so, do you have it connected to have the audio configured in the ATEM to be a line in instead of mic? And also, is it on? The channel is on. You need a little bit more info about that. And then also, if you're going into Streamlabs, is the audio being added under the source or um, something different? You need a little bit more info for that, but I would check that. M. Mill, anyone had a bricked A10 Mini Pro? Ours is past warranty and bricked, used once a week and always unplugged. Cannot factory reset it via USB. Um, update always fails. Black Magic said his board is fried. Yeah, if it's fried. Thankfully, the A10 Mini Pro has come down in price. It's only $295 now. Unfortunately, probably to get it repaired, it'll probably be easier just to get another one, especially if the factory reset is not working. Pounds Media, which software do you prefer to convert text to speech? Eleven Labs is what I personally use. Is the ATEM Mini Stream discontinued? No, not at all. Not at all. James, hey, you are welcome. Stretch. What's the cheapest camera that I can purchase for a small church that will give me okay quality? Church is about a thousand square feet. The AV Cans E20 is going for three hundred ninety nine dollars for a PPZ. You will not get a DSLR or any camera um, less than that that can do that. 
G. Albert regarding copyright strikes on YouTube and Facebook. What happened? What happens to get strikes? Does your site go to purgatory for a moment or does Facebook? Well, it's two things. On YouTube, you get three strikes and you are out. Um, a copyright claim is not the same thing as a copyright strike. If you get a copyright strike, um, like I've sent strikes to people because they've stolen my stuff and I've put a strike on them. You get three strikes, you're out. You can't be on YouTube ever again um, for your channel. Um, a strike is, I think the first strike, I think it's like 48 hours or something like that. Then the next strike is, I think, like two weeks. And then the third strike, you're done. Um, copyright claims are not bad. You shouldn't get a lot of them. But a copyright claim is like, no, you can keep your video up, but if you make any money, it comes to me. That's where the con artists, I can't stand, come in. That's why I try and go through churches. And if people ain't legitimately, don't don't let them. Because they're like, hey, I can just grab a penny from you. But if I'm grabbing a penny from a thousand people, you know, or a dollar, you know, that's what I try to avoid. Um, but yeah, if audio is, oh, Sam, I thought you were saying my audio was garbled. I kept looking over here. Um, yeah, so you just got to be mindful of that. Strikes are bad. Um, claims are not, but I think they should be fought. Back to Leanna, it says, the audio is garbled. Um, garbled. That's strange. I would, I would probably say email me and send me a sample of it so I can get an idea um, of what that could possibly be. Um, Richard, hello, hello. What display softwares works best on laptops? I love your um, new work laptop. Um, thank you. What display softwares works best? I mean, I've used them all. The only issue is just like even with my new one is limited to how many outputs. Like right now, I can only have one output. I have not tested if these mobile monitors that I use, if they actually support um, USB out. So like the one that I have here, I could send something over USB. There are ones that do have USB out. I don't know if that will work with that, but typically laptops, you are limited to how many outs you would have to use a dock or something, but then that's also limited by your graphics card. Since I have two graphics cards, theoretically, I would think it should support five outs, but I just don't know if it'll actually recognize that many outs on there. Um, but I think I, I think we've reached our full our field today, folks. Um, what else do we have going on? So let me tell you my schedule. Um, next week we're going to be back at TCF. We have a bunch of things to do. Um, oh, actually, let me show you some of the things that we actually have designed. So, hold on one second. Alrighty, so one of the things that I've been doing with TCF, so this is the mount that goes for the Unify um, G3, G4, G5 bullet cameras. So the ceiling tiles normally are about like that thick, but the ones that are at TCF, they're like this thick, and it wasn't big enough. So what I ended up doing was leveraging the 3D printer, and, well, actually, I used Onshape. Let me show you that. You see that pretty girl right there? That's her school pictures. Actually, let me cut out of here real quick. Let me log in and show you. This is the beauty of the 3D printing and all this other stuff. So what I did is I designed this. Real simple. All it was was a circle 
And then I have some calipers to measure the distance of this, of where the holes were. And we just made a design here to where the ethernet cable can go through and then it gives, um, it screws into there and it just gives a wider base for that ceiling tile so we can use longer screws like this. So these are my first couple of iterations that didn't come out right because <laughs> they were off in my measurements. But then we got this one. So this is just the beauty of uh, real world stuff that you can do. So like we have our screws in here, much longer. So they'll go into the ceiling tiles. We get it all lined up here and then boom. So now we have a much further for the ceiling tile and we got something that's gonna brace it and hold it in place. So real life use of the 3D printer, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then my daughter is really liking it as well too. So that's what we got right there. And um, then if we come over here, I mean, it's really simple. I need, I'm learning this as well too. So let me go back and I'll just show you just how I'm gonna try and make it all over again just to show you how it works. I'm gonna try and do this live. I'm actually gonna do some more Unify stuff, make my own things in here. So first we would just make a new sketch. Then we would have our plane. I'm gonna do it on the top here. And then I'd have a circle. I wanna do this from a center point and we come out to our measurements. So this was actually, uh, I think it was 2.7 millimeters. So say this is where the holes need to be. That's how the diameter, where those holes are. I do that. Then I do another hole right here at this point that was at a 0.2, which is the diameter of the, the holes for where the, that needs to go. Then I come over here. Not there. Do another one right there at two to match. Then I needed something for the I keep hitting the wrong one. Like I said, I'm still learning this. Then I do another one here in the center for the Ethernet cable to go through. Then another one for the outer perimeter. And that's it. Let me check that off. And now I want to enlarge this whole thing. So we click on there and we click on here. And then I want to thicken that how by how much? Uh, I don't know, maybe a 0.35. And boom, there you go. That is my design. And then I come out here, export it, Give it whatever, and I'll say, I don't know, unify as a STL file. Then I come over here to my clarity, open up this file. There it is. We slice it. And then it shows where it's printing. And it's hollowed out, and that's it. And that's what I print out, and then that's the one that I have that makes the whole thing. So this is what <laughs> I've been learning at the same time. So the 3D stuff is really, really cool um, to do that. Um, let me do these last couple of ones here. Um, G. Albert, I asked about YouTube and Facebook, right? Because leadership over the media and tech ministry are hard-headed and say that we are covered with that we do not. They can keep thinking they covered over it. It's not true. It says right there in the YouTube screen, saying that giving credit is not a valid way to use content that you do not own. Uh, Ty, are you still affiliated with Signs and Wonders as far as attending their weekly services? No, I am not. Um, I attend Gates of Faith right now, um, but just from... And even Gates, I'm probably there only maybe like once a month just because I'm always doing something. And I don't really have any responsibility. I think kind of like when we were talking about Spiritually Starved, that podcast, the media booth, that was kind of the reason. Like I miss what I do. I miss playing. I miss singing. Like I think 
um, at Antioch, the young adults that sing on Fifth Sunday, they're trying to get me to come back and um, do a Fifth Sunday. I might do that because I really do. I really miss playing. I miss singing at Gates. Um, there are no guys that sing, so a bunch of them. My sister is over, um, leads that, and, you know, they're like, I think like a couple of Sundays ago they did, during Easter, they did an old hymn that the musician didn't know, and they were, my sister was trying to say, she was looking at me like, AJ, get up, you know how to play the song, and I said, no, I'm just sitting here, so I do miss that stuff, I do miss the other churches, but it was one of those things that it was the best move for me, it was other stuff going on, and it's gotten to the point where, like, from a media standpoint, I've been here before, I don't want to get to a place where it's just work, um, because then, Again, it goes back to me being spiritually starved. I need to be somewhere where I can just sit back and learn. And unfortunately, and fortunately, because I'm helping y'all, I don't get a chance to sit down as much as I want to. Like missing Wednesday night um, at my church to just sit down and take in, um, to be able to sit Sunday. Um, it's dual thing, being able to sit there at church Sunday and take in. But then being a preacher's kid, we were always doing something. So for me to sit at church and not sing, like during Easter, it was, they were singing um, Kurt Franklin's Don't Cry, and people were turning around looking at me, and I was singing the tenor part, and I'm like, because I miss it. But it's one of those things I'm forcing myself to do. So long answer. Uh, Miracle Dali. Um, good morning. This is good stuff. Glad it was helpful. G. Albert, um, when you do your live streams, do you pres – um, prescribe before hitting the go live prescript excuse me um when you do your live streams do you prescript before hitting the go live i'm planning to do a live stream unboxing honestly look at my backlog that's how i normally do my stuff i normally just hit the record button and i just talk and like for example um i'm already going in so let me let me let me show you some behind the scenes stuff so you can actually see some of the stuff i do um, and it's, it's, it's crazy <laughs> the stuff I do, like out of habit, I just record and then I go over the parts. If I make a mistake, I make a mental note to myself and say, I need to do this and that like the nitro 17. I have a bunch of other stuff that I recorded it and the video just did not work. Or, you know, what? I'm going to do now, you know, cause I sent a video to now, you know, this is another YouTube channel that I watch, they talk about a lot of um, Tesla stuff. So I installed a EV charger in the in my in the house. I can't install it in the wall because I rent it. So um, I'm gonna just show you how I normally do my stuff, uh, and this is the same way how I do all of my things. So I come in here. And let's do a new timeline, and this is the video. These are all the videos that I do. So if I bring it all down, and I think I got the audio coming through here. So if I just come in here. Hey, Rocky Dusty. This is AJ, and um, we, we have ourselves a special model guy. All right, so that's actually backwards. Let me flip that. And I, I, think, I think we'll be all right. I think that guy is a little bit shiny. <laughs> so. All right, so I got this trailer queued up. Yeah. So I just go through and do everything. So I literally just keep recording, and then ultimately I cut out everything that's not needed. So <clears throat> I say the same thing. And this is for Philip Paul. This is what I used to do for church post-production. I just showed everything behind the scenes of what I do, take the whole thing and shrink it down. So, like, if I go here... That's the video that y'all ended up seeing if you watched that video. But if I come here, these are everything that I made with this. So actually, no, let me not do that because I did that on the laptop. Let me go to the other one. Um, like I'll use the Aura. That's the better one. The, the multi-view screen that I did. This is the video that y'all saw that was edited. But... When I go through, you see all these chops. It's one long video. But, so I'll start it from here. This is some nasty dude. 
Okay, thank you, CEO here. And we got ourselves another product here from Oraj. This is a once the See, right here, I just keep recording and I just make mental notes of like, oh, wait a minute, start over again, start over again. And I just keep it. So I just record so I don't miss anything and I just go. <laughs> so the mindset is I do the same thing with a live stream. I just keep going um, and do a service and I start chopping out the stuff that's not needed. Um, so hopefully that helps. I might get back into the um, church post-production. I really want to, um, but there's a bunch of other things. Um, Reverend Richard, yes, um, Pastor Sales retired, and now is Pastor Paul. I actually did some stuff at his at the other church he was at um, before. I forgot the name Mount Mount. I can't remember. Um, trying to actually get to Antioch's website on his YouTube channel, um, Antioch Verina. So it's Pastor Paul Flowers is the new pastor. He actually just was installed on the 23rd of last month. Um, so, yeah, so that is. Oh, that's I haven't seen him in a minute. And that's his choir that's back behind there. Um, this must have been an anniversary service. Yeah, this is the anniversary, um, the, inst the pastoral installation. Yeah, and they didn't even change the name of this. But now from here, did I just click on the exact same thing? Yeah, so that's um, Pastor Flowers um, there. Actually knew him when he was an asso associate minister at Antioch when I was there originally before they built the sanctuary, but he is the pastor there now. Um, oh, let me go back. This is the reason why you tell people to like. Only one like, 166 views, but only one person liked it. Please, that's why you see me do this, and I bring this up. Please do that with your church. You're, you're robbing yourself of using the algorithm to help push your videos out. And again, I used to go back. Again, I'm not trying to be mean. This is just me being real. When I go back through here, what's the difference? Um, in the morning, we shall see his glory. I actually, I'm going to go to church. I would call out the stuff because right now, these are the last videos that I did when I was there, when I was editing. Um, service not privilege. Calling this stuff out. Compared to worship service, worship service, worship service, worship service, worship service, worship service. I don't know what this is. And the only people who are watching this are the people who like the image that they see or it's traditional people from the church. That's why you're robbing yourself if you don't do this other stuff and call out what you're doing on your stream. I'm just making sure the audio is there. Um, I use the same PC to project and live stream, but my camera footage lags when using OpenLP. Is there a way to stop the lagging? Yes, remove the computer from doing so much stuff. That's 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 what we. That's why I'm saying, even though the computer I have over here is a beast, over here. Uh, let me pull this. Even though this system over here is a beast, the only thing it is doing is running a live stream because it is intense in what it's doing. So I don't know. It doesn't show. Yeah, I need to, I don't think you're going to be able to see it. All right, so like right there, if I cut in. With this system, it is literally only using, a it's using 100% GPU memory but it is only using 12% in total of what the system is using because the system is live streaming to the website and stuff like that. But I don't, when I do my live stream, I, and that's why I'm saying my recommendation is not to run multiple things on the computer because it uses a lot of resources. Um, so that's what I would say. Hey, you're welcome. Um, TT. 
When someone unplugged the media equipment, I was kind of glad so I can take a break. It's still disconnected. <laughs> That's one way. That has been tried multiple times. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, I, like I said, I miss the stuff that I'm doing. I, I mean, I've had a history there. I was there before my daughter was born. That's how I met her mother. That's where I was married at. Um, I've been there, and I've had a history of a bunch of stuff. Some of the kids who are now in college, I remember when they were, like, born, and they were two and all this other stuff, like Aiden and um, a bunch of the kids who are now adults. They were there when I was over the youth ministry before the new sanctuary. So, yeah, I miss that stuff. Um, again, I, it's at a point where I need to get, I need to spiritually get me straight. Um, cause again, doing stuff like this, I love what I'm doing, but honestly it's draining. Um, not in a bad way. I pour out on y'all a lot and then I need to now see now we're going in podcast stuff. Cause we, we go in extra long in here, which is fine. It's just that the reason why I try and do the stuff that I do is not that I'm better or nothing like that. I'm just further down the road than y'all. And right now, the more I want to really encourage y'all to help other churches in your community. But I like to tell you the dark side of that stuff too. I have tons of people that call me and they don't give two craps about my time. And I say that with love. Like I have people that will call me on Sunday. AJ, can you do this? I'm like, I'm in church. I can't answer your question. Or um, AJ, give me a call. I need to get this stuff fixed. I'm, I'm spending time with my daughter. No, I can't do that. Like, yes, I run a company, but, and I do this to try and help, but you have to take time because, like, Pastor J. Kyle says the same thing. Givers have to set limits because takers don't. They will keep taking and taking and taking. And I like to help people, but sometimes people take that kindness for granted, and they take more than I can dish out, and I have to have time to do that. S. Ellis, really appreciate you, bro. Looking for a way to show animated power lower thirds in a sanctuary on a stream. Well, that all depends on what you're using. We've gone through and made a couple of them that you can make them through stuff in Ubuntu Elements, make them yourself, um, have DaVinci Resolve like I'm doing, push to your streaming system. Again, I don't know your setup. You can have static ones. You can do a bunch of them using through presentation software, but really need to know the setup. And we got a bunch of stuff that goes over that. OBS has one using the animated lower thirds. You can do those as well, too. Um, Stretch, what's the best scripture software, or can you post a link um, from your channel that covers this? Um, Worship Tools Presenter. Um, Worshiptools.com. You go to Presenter. That is completely free. That is what I um, recommend anyone starting with who doesn't have any type of presentation software I would start with them because it is free. And I have tons and tons and tons of um, that covers that stuff. So, like, here, this is the playlist of all the videos that I've done with um, – originally it was Worship Extreme. Now it's Presenter by Worship Tools. But all of the stuff is exactly the same. From over the years. This is where I would start with that. Um, and it covers pretty much everything that we got. Victor. New to streaming. Wanted to keep it all in the same ecosystem. Moving forward with a black magic video switcher. So I would want black magic cameras. How can I get go about making their cameras PTZ? Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, to get you could like I have a pocket cinema camera 4K. That's what I have right now that I am using. To turn this into a PTZ, I would need an arm to put on top of that. It does have length control. You could do that. But for to make this a PTZ would cost more than, like, that camera right there. This camera right here was $1,400. That one right there is $1,400, and it already has PTZ built in and is connected to um, black magic stuff. Um, I have a studio camera and I have the other camera is actually right there. Both of those are black magic cameras. They're great, but the black magic cameras are not set it and forget it. 
you have to have somebody. The reason why this camera works so well is because I don't move. If I move out of the way, it doesn't get in focus. That's why you see everything blurred. I'm locked to where that camera is. There is no autofocus. So that's one thing you have to be aware of. Um, Brittany, I might have missed this. What's the best way to do lyrics in OBS? Um, well, I have a video covering that. You could do it directly in OBS using some of the stuff. But if you do it using lyrics, you I've shown ways and videos to show how you can bring in PowerPoint, any presentation software, capture the screen, send it over NDI into OBS. Um, so you just have to pick whichever platform you've used. I've used um, Worship Tools Presenter, um, Easy Worship, Open LP, Pro Presenter, Media Shout, Proclaim, um, tons of them. The, the steps are exactly the same to do it. Video Psalm is another one. Free Show is another one. Um, it's a bunch of them. Um, and I think this is probably going to be my last one here because they're in the um, NAB for Black Magic. Is well, it's going to start here in about four minutes. Last one, Sonny. In our church, ATEM Mini, fourth button is not working. I tried keeping all the inputs, but it's not showing. The stream becomes black. Most likely it's damaged. Um, I will contact Black Magic for um, RMA if it's still in service and see what a repair would be. Um, that's the only thing I would say about that. Um, and this is this is going to be my last one because Victor's asking, and it's the same setup I have. What PTZ would you recommend to work with a Blackmagic ecosystem? Right now, I have Blackmagic. I'm using a Famaco camera. Um, let me go through all of them. So what I'm using right now that you're seeing, that is a PTZ Optics Move SE. That one over there, oh, if I can get on the right camera. That one over there is a Famaco um, 4K AI tracking PTZ. Over there is the BZB Gear 4K PTZ that I'm using. And then that is a SMT AV 10X 1080p for that. And that works with mine. Um, I mean, because you're seeing what is coming through and it works in my ecosystem. All of my videos are based on that setup. No, it does not need a good internet. It needs a good network because it's talking. NDI is not using internet at all. It's using your local network to talk between devices. So it needs to be um, not a bad connection, slow. All right, this is really, really my last one. G. Albert, um, have you ever planned to create a Q-tips to set up thumbnails for church worship service? Yes, actually I did have done a video. Ours is the same, same lookalike. Yeah, I actually have um, did that, making thumbnails, um, and done that. And that's what I used to do during the church post-production as well, too. All right, I think that's about it, folks. Um, Got to get on this NAB one real quick, but I want to give a big shout-out to all my Patreon and YouTube supporters. If you like what we're doing, folks, hey, we, I, we don't make a lot from YouTube. I do this because this is my mission. This is what I love to do, and I love to help. But if you enjoy what I do, I would really appreciate if you go to patreon.com and become a patron, or you can click the join button down below. Um, the money here does not go to pay for any of this stuff, but I mean, pay for me to live lavishly. No, but most of the stuff that y'all do goes right back into buying new products and stuff like that to review, or it helps to pay for the giveaways that we do as a way to give back. I don't want to just teach you stuff. I want to actually put my money where my mouth is and actually help give y'all something. Um, and that's where the giveaways and all the other stuff is doing. And that's about it. Um, again, thank you all for what y'all are doing. Again, I'm I'm here in the trenches, which I'm not. Actually, y'all are doing more than I'm doing right now because I'm not actually running anything on Sundays. I'm kind of like tech support <laughs> behind the scenes for a bunch of people. But really appreciate all the hard work y'all are doing, the dedication that y'all continue to do. We would miss something. Your ministry would miss something if you're not doing what you're doing. Appreciate all the hard work you're doing. And that's about it, folks. Again, we're going to be doing this again tomorrow. I forgot the time. If you go to the channel, make sure you have the bell notification on. That way you don't miss it. Um, but we will be doing this again tomorrow. Uh, if y'all are on the NAB live stream on Black Magic, I will be there. 
And that's about it. I hope y'all have a good one, folks. And we'll be seeing y'all tomorrow for those that are on the live stream. Or we'll be seeing y'all um, next week. We're doing videos for the OBS bot and the install of TCF. All right, folks. We'll be talking with y'all later. Bye.